What's up, my friend? I'm uh, sensitive. sensitive. I feel sensitive and powered just being on this new journey, um, discovering people. It sounds kind of crazy when you say it like that because it's not your daily norm conversation or your language, and, and you start saying stuff like, I'm on a journey to discover people, and they look at you weird, like discovering what? You know, what kind, what kind of stuff are you trying to discover? You know, we're discovering people. For people who don't know, this is my friend Rolando Garcia, awesome man of God, right here from the Rio Grande Valley, and uh, just doing the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So what, what, what happened last night? Last night, I, I was able to see, uh, Kevin, um, I was able to see hunger, man. And it's something that, you know, if, if you're connected with, uh, in, if you're in the business of purpose and change, you, you'll catch these things. Sometimes you don't catch them because uh, we're so disconnected and we're so far away from our purpose that, you know, there, there's there's people crying out for help in front of you and you don't even notice it because you're so disconnected. But when you're connected, you, you're able to see, you, you'll be able to catch what, what we're talking about right now. I was able to see hunger and I was able to see it in kids and young people and older people. I saw three generations. I saw kids. I saw the young people and the older crowd last night. It was about 30. But I saw so much hunger last night, man. They were like starving. You can see it in their faces, their body language. And you can tell people are just hungry for change. They're hungry to do something different. And and maybe it's for a lot of things. Maybe it's because, you know, after the pandemic, uh, it just like something just clicked in people. And they were able to face reality, man. But... Um, you know, I just put a post out. I'm doing this uh, Empower 360 to see how many people showed up. And I had people drive from two hours just to come and sit down for an hour and a half, two hours with me yesterday. And uh, it was just so amazing, man, to be able to see a generation that's hungry. Somebody. So that was a, that was a last minute type of uh, meeting. And you had it at uh, your sister's church in, in Brownsville. Is that where it was at? So uh, I have a clubhouse okay. where I'm at. And I'm like, I told my wife, you know what, let's just, uh, I'm going to shoot this out. I'm going to just test the waters. Uh, let's test the hunger. You know, let's see what people are all about. So I just put it out a day before and I had 30 people show up. And people drove from two hours, an hour and a half, an hour from distance. And um, that's just to show you what people are, what people are willing to do right now mm -hmm. just to go to the next level. And since I had limited space, I only had a limit of 30 people. So I literally turned down uh, close to 100 people. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I just didn't respond to their messages, and I just accepted the first you're, 30 people. You're, you're not welcome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I accepted that the first 30 people that, that responded, and uh, 30 people showed up, man. I mean, it was pretty powerful, man. And, and people were just hungry for God. Uh, you, you talked about generations. Now, I saw a little video, uh, I think it was your, your daughter, that began to, to speak a little bit um, uh, about the things of God, and I saw an older man get up and just kind of share a little bit, but... Uh, you know, I know you're starting to see a lot more hunger in the people. Is it a hunger just to know God, or is it a hunger to make God know? I believe it's a combination of both, Kevin. Um, I believe that there's people that know that they know that they know that God called them to do something great, but sometimes they have no direction. And um, when you give them an opportunity to speak, you kind of you kind of start finding out where they're at because sometimes we just want to be the one speaking and communicating. So what I like to do, I like to give them an opportunity. I'm like, just, I'm going to give you two minutes. And if you start just t telling people, you know what, two minutes, uh, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, you know that I might just call you out, and, and you start just thinking about what you're going to say, and so I'm, I have two minutes. What, what can you say in two minutes? You can say a lot in two minutes. Mm -hmm. And you start finding out where they're at, and it's pretty powerful, man. And uh, the older generation, some, some of these people are saying, you know what, I've been waiting for this all my life. So if they've been in, in the Lord for 20 years, imagine all their life waiting for, for an opportunity like this. And um, then you, you give the, uh, an opportunity to young people to, to speak, and then they, they speak some crazy things, but so deep. And you, you would have thought, man, how can this young person be so deep right now into this? But nobody's given them an opportunity to speak it out. Mm -hmm. So that's where we come in and we let them, we're allowing them to use our platform. And... The only way you can allow people to use your platform is really for you to understand that there might be somebody out there that's better than you mm -hmm. and that you're okay with that. Yeah. And if you're, you're okay with it, that means that, uh, that you understand your assignment in life. Mm -hmm. So that's what discovering people is all about. That's what, in, in my sense, when I talk about discovering the next generation, I have to understand and I come to a conclusion that, I, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come 
in contact with people that are probably a million times better than me and I have to be okay with that. That's what this journey is about. Now, you're, you you started a ministry. Uh, it's like a movement. It's, I don't think the ministry is called this, but the movement is called Manifest. Yes, right? sir. And the Manifest is to see ma- people manifest in front of others, right? Yeah. But really, it's a manifesting of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. It's manifesting of the Holy Spirit where people, a lot of people, they, they, they love God. But they never been put in a position wow. where the Spirit of God could come upon them there we go. and flow through them. And so you've been giving opportunities and creating atmospheres and places where uh, they're challenged to come on up and just begin to flow. Yeah. Flow with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now you see, th- is this just the adults? This is who's who's the ones that you're you're feeling inspired to lead and to give them opportunity to manifest in the things of God. You know, last night I was able to see Kevin that I know. I, although I've been doing this a lot with kids and youth, but I see that the older generation they, they want an opportunity as well, man. Um, but yeah, we, we set up an atmosphere uh, anywhere we go, anywhere where they allow us to, and if people show up, and some people will show up willingly. Sometimes parents just take kids, you know, like hey, I need you to go to this youth event or whatever it is. But uh, the the goal is that they made it. It doesn't matter how they made it. Maybe they were forced to be there, or, but I believe that it was in God's agenda. And once they get there, um, I just call them out. And the moment they, they, they grab the mic, the moment they, they go up to stage, they're already starting to break barriers. They're starting to break chains. Because in that moment, they're already, um, they're basically overcoming the second biggest uh, phobia that exists today, which is the fear of speaking in public or the fear of speaking, period. Mm-hmm. So the moment they get up there, they're already 50% there. And the moment they even say hello or just say their name on the mic, they already broke away with one of the biggest uh, phobias that exist today, which is the, the fear of speaking. Mm-hmm. And, if, and if the fear of speaking uh, is one of the biggest phobia, that means that the enemy has, has the church and has people. The, he's basically muting people. The enemy's afraid of you becoming an, an excellent communicator because once you find out that you can become a communicator and that you have a voice, then you become you become a weapon, man. You become it's kind of like uh, you you become dangerous in a good way, in the good sense. And that's my whole objective. My my whole objective is for you to find out that you can do this. It's not just for me. It's not just for Kevin. It's not just for these amazing speakers that you see on TV. This is for anybody that's willing to get, for them to, to give themselves an opportunity. So I'll ask them a question: Did you like it? Because mm-hmm. they start speaking and they didn't even know they can do it, right? And the Holy Spirit just comes upon them in a super supernatural way. And you ask him a question, do you do you see yourself doing this? You're like, yeah. Do you like it? I'm like, yeah, I kind of like this. Because they, they, they thought that they were never going to like this. They thought that this was just for you and me or for somebody behind the pulpit. But that's what Manifest is about. It's about you discovering who you are, your talents, your abilities, your dreams, your vision. And all of a sudden, this antisocial kid uh, that you see him doesn't speak at all. And all of a sudden, you see him, you hear him speaking for the first time. It's It just blows you away, man. Um and then you have these kids that have been in church all their lives. Uh, they, they have Sunday teachers. Their, their teachers are teaching them. And, and sometimes we think that they're not paying attention, Kevin, but they're paying attention. Yeah. It's going to their spirit. And all of a sudden, they, they, you know, they've been in church five years, ten years. And uh, sometimes parents can think it's, it's you know, but they're not learning anything. But all of a sudden, you hear them speak. You give them the mic. And they start speaking everything that they've been learning since they were kids. Mm-hmm. Everything that Sunday school teacher put inside to them, and, and sometimes that's a hard ministry because um, yeah. that Sunday school teacher might not ever see that kid manifest, and you might think it's in vain. And I'm speaking to somebody right now that that you're like, man, I, I teach the kids, but uh, you might not see that manifest at 10 years, 15, 20, 30 years later. But the the, the goal is that they one day that person is going to manifest, and everything that you taught that person wasn't in vain. That's right, and, and those, are, those are just seeds throughout the years. Yeah, when, when it might have been that Sunday school teacher or that that grandma that only had a few moments with their grandchild, and uh, and she ministered to her. You know, even today, I'm I'm 47 years old, and I minister all the time. But most of the teachings that I share are from things that I learned when Whoa. I was a child because yeah. of you know my my godly father and mother that raised me up in the things of the Lord. You know, I think that's what what built the uh, 
the foundations. You know, next year, 2022, the Lord spoke to me about restoring spiritual foundations. Mm, come on. And that's something that I did, not have to, I did not have to work on because it was something that was so instilled in my life growing up. I had strong spiritual foundations. Yeah. But I realized that there's a whole generation that doesn't know, they don't know the things of God. They don't know uh, morality. Uh, there's these, uh, they don't know faith. You know, and there are things, these are spiritual foundations that need to be, they need to be reestablished and relayed. There we go. So that people could build upon those things. You know, yeah. uh, I, was, I was reading, and it's actually going to become the theme of, um, of uh, next year uh, when Jesus was talking about those that, that come to me, hear my word, mm. and do it. Come on. Those are the ones that build their house upon a firm foundation. There we go. And that's what we're going to be dealing with next year next year but see these a lot of our our young and also the adults they have foundations but a lot of times the foundations don't come out until there's a little bit of pressure and we can allow the pressure of life to pull them out or we can allow or we can actually challenge them in that manifest atmosphere to hey here's a mic share something from your heart Hmm. and let god just kind of flow through you and i think that's really it's almost like a hidden secret that a lot of people don't realize that most ministers, that's all we do. Wow. Is all we're doing is sharing what the Lord puts in our heart Amen. in the moment. There was a an older minister, uh, well, not old, he's old now, but back in the late 60s, 70s, mm-hmm. there was a, a recapturing of the presence of God. Amen. We used to have a lot of miracles and signs and wonders and meetings from camp meetings and what have you. But there wasn't this welcoming and um, a desire and expectation for the presence of God. Wow. So when people would pray, you know, they would pray to say their prayers, but there wasn't this intimate worship. There wasn't this intimate pressing into the presence of God. Mm. And so there was this one man who was uh, different. Yeah. You know, he was someone that – Different. That <laughs> he was different. He was someone that didn't, didn't conform with society, d- didn't – he didn't fit in with the church. He didn't fit in with normal people. and uh, But when he was given opportunity to kind of share what was in his heart, uh, I heard one uh, message from him, or it was a time with him, where he's just talking to people about the love of God. Mm. And then uh, as he's talking about the Holy Spirit and the, and the presence of God, he says, it's time to stop talking about him and just start, exp- and start welcoming him in. And he said, come Holy Spirit. And as soon as he said, come Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came in really strong, wow. and people started getting falling off the chairs, and they began to cry and to wow. laugh and to weep. And I feel the presence and, right now. Yeah, because you can't talk about the Holy wow. Ghost without the Holy Ghost showing up. And so that one service created a movement that spread mm. across the United States and across the world. But it, it's amazing, or it, it's it's kind of like a, you know. Why? Why did we lose welcoming the presence of God? Wow. Why did we not grow up? Or why did it took to the 60s and 70s for that to be re-brought into the body of Christ? I got you. And it was because uh, people lacked, people who knew did not share. Mm. And people, uh, people that had that experience, they thought it was just for them in alone. And so they didn't open up their mouth wow. to share. It took this man being an oddball, welcoming the presence of God so that others <laughs> can rise in that in that glory, you know? Wow. And so when you are talking about these these young, these youth that are manifesting in these services and these gatherings, but really what you're doing is you're creating a, a welcoming and open culture so that when they come in here, they might see, man, I, I, I'll never do that, you know, but then they see their friend jump oh, in yeah. there. Their other friend jump in there, and next thing you know, they're given that challenge, and they get that mic, and by that time, they've been kind of like soaking in the, in the Holy Ghost atmosphere, Yeah. and then the Spirit of God begins to flow through wow. them, and they learn how to flow. Really, that's what it is. It's yeah. not really manifest. It's manifesting the glory of God. Amen. That's what it is. Yeah. But it's not me manifesting. It's the Holy Ghost manifesting through me. You know, Kevin, um, right now I was just, I was in a meeting with some creatives a little while ago before we came in to do the podcast. And uh, he's like, who's that young man that was speaking on uh, your Facebook on my story? He's like, that's my son. He's like, how did you get him to do that? I'm like, well, he's been doing it since he was nine. 
Now he's 16. And it's become his norm. And and you see him communicating. He says, just imagine having kids like that. It, it just becomes normal because when you come into the, the atmospheres, um, the empowerment sessions, or everything that we do on Manifest, uh, it's almost like those who already know what we do, uh, they're expecting that already. And it's it's kind of becoming their lifestyle. We're, we're creating, like you said, a movement. And if I can teach a kid at 9, 10, 11, 12, for them to, this to be his norm, the moment he's out of that, it's, it's almost like a withdrawal. You feel that this ha this becomes your environment. This becomes your place. And when he's not doing that and when he's not walking in that, uh, he, he feels out of place. And I tell you that because um, my way before COVID, my son was already homeschooled. And him and my daughter, my daughter's 17, he's 16. That's that. Can we go back to public school? And I'm like, I'm going to give you an opportunity. But I, I guarantee you by December, which is this December, you guys are not going to want to be there. And um, my son just, I just took him out of school today. Today was his last day in public school again. And um, because you, you feel out of place. You're, you're so much into this environment and you start looking like this environment, which is the presence of God, that the moment you get out of it, you feel out of place, Kevin. Yeah. And I believe that that's what we have to teach. And uh, my son right now, he's reading a book a, uh, a, book a week. Every, every week he reads a new book. And I'm kind of getting him ready, training him, because he understands that this is what he wants to do. He's in the business of purpose and change. He's in the business of people. He's in the business of, of transformation. And I'm like, if you're going to take this serious, then you're going to have to go to another level. So he's at a point in his, of his life where I, I had to walk him through it, but he had to make his own decision that this is what he wants to do. I don't want to just force him to do it. This is what he wants to do. So now other kids seeing him. His work ethic, how he how he flows, the way he communicates, the way he thinks, they're like, I want that. What do I have to do to get that? And I believe that that's what manifest is about. So yes, uh, people are losing the fear, and and that's just the beginning of waking up this giant. I believe that's what we're doing, and and that's why I meet with. I try to meet every single day. I try to meet with somebody. I try to I try to either have a breakfast or a coffee with somebody every day. That's my goal. I want to connect with somebody. And every time I'm connecting with somebody, they're like, what is, what is it that you carry? You, you carry something. You, you have something. And I feel the presence of God. You carry something. And, and I believe that that's, that's the journey that I'm in right now, just to discover people. But, but in the kids, it's, so, it's just so, more, so, so powerful. Because I see a kid that's nine, year old, nine years old, Kevin, and this is what's going through my mind. I'm like, man, that, guy, that kid's so powerful. If somebody can just take the time to walk him in through the next four or five years of his life, he's gonna become a, such a powerhouse. But where are those mentors? Because I can't be there every day with that kid, but but I see them in the audience. I see them everywhere I go. I'm like, that kid is is so powerful, but if, if somebody can just stay with him, mentor him, walk him through the process of life, put him in the right atmosphere, that kid will be, become the next transformer of this nation or the world. But where are those mentors at? Yeah. It takes it takes a special kind of person to say, you know what? I know he's gonna be better than me, and I'm willing to to pay the price, uh, and to be around that person for the next five years, so that he can develop and become the finished product one day, the person that's gonna change this nation. And um, the only thing is that there's no money in this youth thing. It's not like other organizations. I mean, what th you mean you're not a millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> These kids don't have jobs, man. <laughs> you know, you're you end up paying for their food. You're paying for everything. And and you know what it takes. They don't have jobs. They're yeah. they're not they don't have their own businesses. They're kids. They're youth. And all of a sudden you you find yourself uh, <laughs> carrying this group of kids with you and uh, all of a sudden you're dropping 10, 20, 30,000 dollars to take them on this journey with you and you're just depending on God, man. Yeah. And that's the that's the actually that's the safest place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been actually spending a lot of time with um, some uh, people regarding uh, you know, using their faith for God, using their faith with God, you know. And when we're doing the work of the Lord, we have to get our faith to a place where we totally rely upon Him mm. and take it and give Him all the problems. Like, God, you called me to do this, and I expect you to provide, mm. you know. But a lot of, a lot of times we have this, this vision, and then we think that we're the ones that are supposed to put it all together. But I, I've learned that it's not us that does the work. It's God that does the work through us. Mm. You know? Come on. So 
if we always give it back to God, it's not even about the money. It's not about the twenty or thirty thousand dollars. That just shows up. But you have to be the one that stands and say, "Okay, Lord, I'm trusting you." You know, and it's always a an Abraham Abraham uh, mo- moment with Isaac. You're always like, "God, I'm I'm laying the thing that I love, the person I love. I'm laying everything that I love at this altar." I, I'm just going to trust you, you know. And then before the knife comes down, he, he says, "He says, uh, don't do it." Wow. Look, you know, there's a there's a, a ram caught in the thicket that the Lord's God provides for mm. you. So, and I got a lot of testimony about how the Lord did it, did it for me. But I've every time I try to do it for myself, it always failed. Mm. Every time I went to somebody and asked them for help, like personally, and I said, "Hey, listen, we got this work we're doing." Um, you know, uh, I know that you, you have some means. Can you help? That's never worked. It's wow. never worked. But every time I went to God and said, Lord, you know the needs. I'm just going to trust you and put it there. The, the, it's always provided. And we're able to do great and mighty things because of that. Um, I had a question regarding your, the, the children. And you're talking about the, we got to surround them with mentors, right? Yeah. In the first, world, the first uh, Gulf War, when we went into Iraq, I saw something I had never seen before. The, we had created these bases in the desert, but they had these huge walls that protected the, the, the soldiers and the troops. And the walls were made out of sand. Wow. They, they took these, uh, like, they were kind of like these containers that they would um, fill up with sand. Yeah. And it would create the walls. So even though it wasn't like laying down concrete and, and putting rebar and all that, uh, it was just these these containers that when you fill them up, they became a wall, right? And basically, they used the resources from the ground and were creative of what mm. was there Come on. to get what they needed to pr- provide protection. And there, the church has great resources. Yeah. The church has the resources of the pastors, the ministers, the 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 prayer warriors. Uh, the the children's church pastor, youth pastors, and I believe that it's you know we need to use the resources of the structures that God already established yeah. to bring and provide for the edification and the encouragement and the teaching of, of the youth, so that they're not walking separate. There because, we go. and I've shared this with you before, when someone is preached to, they get inspired. But when someone is taught, they grow. Yeah. It's like uh, when they're taught, the roots grow down. But when they, pre- they hear preaching, the tree grows up. And Amen. you need both or yeah. the tree falls over. You know, And so if someone was looking on the outside of your ministry and saying, okay, these kids are manifesting, right? But y- just like your son is learning a lot from books and is surrounding himself with, with some mentors, they need that so they can have firm foundations. Yeah. You know, because not, if not, they'll get involved in spiritualism where it's always about the mo- the emotion of the moment. And when they don't feel the emotion, mm. they start making up stuff. Wow. Or they start stepping into an, another spirit, you know. I got you. And that's why it's important for all of us when we see the gifts of God start operating in somebody. And even before then, to always surround them with spiritual mm. foundations, teach them about faith, teach them about love, teach them about why they're doing what they're doing. And it's, and it's not even them. It's the Holy Ghost. Uh, we started our, our, our cell groups in the church, and it wasn't because I wanted the, fi- the, the groups to grow. It wasn't because I wanted more numbers in the church. The desire was I wanted the gifts of the Spirit to begin to flow through the people and I wanted to create atmospheres where it is, where they allow the gifts of the Spirit to flow. Because if it flows in the group, then it'll flow in the home and in the work. And that's exactly what you guys are doing. When someone gets up there, the Spirit of God is in the room. You guys have been worshiping. You guys have been spending time with God. Others have been declaring the word of the Lord. And now this, this young man, young woman, the Holy Ghost comes upon them. And the gift, the prophecy co- starts coming. It's and so they powerful. start prophesying. Yeah. They start speaking some things, and then they don't even realize it. But then there's an, a, a, the gift of, of word of knowledge, a word of wisdom begins mm-hmm. to flow. There because these are the verbal gifts. 
These yeah. are the verbal gifts. But a lot of times with the verbal gifts come, uh, word of knowledge, prophecy, you know, word of wisdom, then there is uh, faith, the gift of faith or the gift of miracles. <laughs> and, and then people start getting healed and delivered. But none of it had to do with the speaker. It all had to do with the Holy Ghost coming upon the speaker mm. and flowing through the speaker. What is the Word of God saying in, in, in Acts chapter 1? Um, Jesus said, uh, he said uh, that you shall receive power to become a witness unto me mm. come on. after the Spirit of God comes upon you. you know? And so when I tell people about Jesus, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I'm not telling people about Jesus. I'm telling Jesus about who Jesus. Because it says, you shall re receive power to become a witness unto me. Mm. So, like, there's Jesus that's wow. in you that wants to come alive. And so I'm, I'm ministering to them. But it's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life that, that comes alive on the inside of that person. And that spirit that comes alive is what brings the complete transformation, the salvation, the the the, the change of life, and the desire to live for God. Wow! You, you got me preaching, bro. Man, <laughs> you, I, I I feel this presence of the, the presence of God right now. It's so powerful. You know, uh, you're talking about mentors right now, and uh, I believe it, this has to do with movement. The Bible says that uh, you know, write the vision down, make it plain upon tablets, and then He says that. So that he who readeth may run, run. It doesn't say walk. It says run. run. Yeah. There's something about movement that that makes you become alive. So I say that because when when you start a movement, because I know somebody that's going to be listening to this is like, well, how can I, I know God has called me to do great things. So how do I start a movement? It has to, it has to do with with movement, moving. In other words, uh, you have to understand that there, somebody, you can't go to the next level unless you've seen the next level. And I'm trying to get this generation, I'm trying to get these young kids to see the next level. How do I do that? By moving them. Moving them to, to see the next level. I have to purposely put myself in an environment and put them in an environment so that they can, they can be in the presence of God and see what the next level looks like. Because God, there's no doubt God is using men and women of God in an extraordinary way. And I want to put them there. And then not only do I want to put them there, not only do I want to teach them, not only do I want to equip them, then I want to put to practice what I've taught them. I want to put to practice what the atmosphere that they've been in. And when those kids see how God uses them, they'll never be the same again. Yeah. And I believe that that's one of the biggest missing pieces today. I want to feel part of something bigger than me. I want to be part of something bigger than me, and that's the body of Christ. That's, that's God's dream. And, and when kids... When, when kids understand that at the youngest age possible, if I can help them understand that, then I know I got them for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So imagine a nine-year-old, an 11-year-old kid, a 12-year-old kid, all of a sudden God's using them in front of hundreds of people. And they're like, wow, God used me. Uh, you know, it, it was worth it. And that becomes more creative than anything that the world can offer them. And it's more attractive than the world. Yeah. Once this becomes more attractive than anything that's out there, then you know you got them for the rest of your life, man. Yeah. that you're not going to lose them because now there's purpose involved there's vision there's destiny and they understood it at a very young age so my goal is to discover you at the youngest age possible so that you can do something great in life some people come 10 years too late 20 years too late 30 years too late uh, my dad you know he started working for the Lord at maybe in his in his 50s and he says Lord why, why didn't you just reach me earlier you know I had the privilege I tell my daughter she's 17 now but I told her, you know, you're never going to be 17 again. You know, you're not going to be 16 again. You're not going to be 18 again. And I told my son the same thing. You can only give that to the Lord once. Yeah. So you either give it to him right now or you're going to regret it when you're older that you were not able to give him the best days of your life. You're going to give him the most precious thing. I tell, I tell my daughter, I have a very unique relationship with the Holy Spirit because me and him, I was able to give something to him that not a lot of people are willing to do. Um, when I was uh, about to graduate, I had a choice, Kevin. Either I, had, I, I go on a full pay scholarship to run track and cross country. I was a top five runner in the state of Texas at the time. And, uh, but I had a choice. I felt a, a great calling to serve God. And in Spanish, we call it trueque, which means an exchange. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, back then in, in the ranch lifestyle, you used to give, uh, you had two cows, you have uh, you know, cattle, you have uh, 
pigs, you have something. So let's do an exchange. I'll give you two pigs for your horse or, you know, that's the way it used to be back then, you know. But here you have this young man and in Spanish they call it trueque. Uh, I didn't have any money, I, but I had a gift which was running. And I said, Lord, I'm going to do an exchange. I'm going to give you my my talent, my gift of running. And all I'm going to ask you is to make me creative. Make me a creative preacher. Make me a creative person. And I'll follow you. And I felt the presence of God came. I, that year, I didn't run. That My last season, I didn't run track, which was I was supposed to go to college. And I left. As soon as I graduated, I left to Mexico. And I spent some months in, in the top of this mountain, which is a real unique story because you, you, you're at a place where people don't even know how old they are because they never got registered. So I left as a missionary. But uh, as a young man, I spent a lot of time with God. And the best years of my life, which was my youth, the most precious thing, I gave it to God. Mm. And... Uh, and, and I tell my daughter that. I'm like, you, you, you can't go back and be 18 again. You can't go back and be 17 again. You can't go back and be 16 again. You, you're only going to be that age one time. Yeah. You'll give them the most valuable thing that you have. And if you understand it at that age, then God's going to use you in extraordinary, extraordinary ways. So today I'm living the result. I'm the result of decisions that I made when I was a young man. I'm a result of decisions that I made. Yeah, I've, I've gone through processes in life. Who doesn't go through processes in life? And then God will put people like you, Kevin. God put you in my life at a very important time where I needed to make decisions to go to do it ex exactly what I'm doing today. And God does that. God will put people in your life. But going back to, you know, purposely putting yourself in an environment, that, that costs you something. It's going to cost you something. I talked about this last night. Um, you're, you're married. you got kids. you got a job. Uh, to put yourself in an environment, you know, you're going to have to get days off of work. Yeah, not only did you get days off, but you, those days you didn't get paid, then you got to get a babysitter so that you can go to a conference or you can spend two days, three days, or four days wherever there's an atmosphere to grow. So there's a price to pay. It's not going to happen by coincidence. It's not going to happen by chance. You're going to have to purposely put yourself in the environment that you want to look like. What do you want to look like? Mm -hmm. You look like the environment. You're a product of the environment where you're dwelling at. My question is, what do you want to look like? I tell this to kids and I speak to them like I'm speaking to you, these kids, and I can see in their eyes and their facial expression and their body language, Kevin, that they're understanding what I'm telling them. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, they're looking at me like, I, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm not talking to them like kids. I'm speaking the way I'm speaking right now. And I feel the presence of the Lord right now in this place. And I can see that they're getting it. They're understanding it. And I'm just running with whoever's getting it. Yeah. I'm running whoever's understanding it. Last night, I t there was a couple of kids in the atmosphere, and uh, I told them, some of you need to get homeschooled. You want to run with this? Because I want to talk about that right now. Are you willing to go homeschooled so you can go full-time and try go on this journey with me to go win souls? To go, uh, and then it imagine there's an opportunity where you're winning souls and you're doing what you love to do, and then you get paid for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not doing it for the money, but what if there was an opportunity, a possibility, where you're getting paid to do what you love to do, and you go on this journey? Yeah. And you're in every city and every state in the United States. Cause that's what's about to happen, Kevin. Now, you just came back from Ohio <laughs> meeting with Tommy Zito. Uh, yeah, Evangelist man. Tommy Zito. Uh, he's a, a, a good friend of mine. We, we got connected uh, uh, recently. With, you know, hadn't really spent too much time with them. Got connected and started hearing about the, this movement of going across the United States. And not just the United States, around the world. And uh, bringing an awakening where people become alive with, with, with Christ. People are born again and changing a city and changing a region. Um, and I know I connected you and Tommy, and uh, you well, guys. You just have been no doing, idea what you just did. Just man. doing. <laughs> you, you guys been traveling already, uh, but you just came back from Ohio because in uh, in Columbus, Ohio, next year in 2022, uh, I believe it, it's uh, was it November or is it October? Yes, uh, they're going to have the meeting. And uh, it's going to be a one week, but before that, they're already mobilizing the churches, sending people out in the streets, a lot of prayers going into this. But that's not just happening in Ohio. That's happened here, right right here in the Rio Grande Valley in Harlingen, yes. Texas, in November, Tommy. And uh, it's really a partnership with uh, his ministry and many churches here in uh, in Harlingen, in the Valley, to bring revival in this land. But but tell me about that trip. Tell me about you and Tommy and uh, what happened so as you I'm, guys went I'm, over there. So I'm uh, driving back from Houston because I just finished arriving from Puerto Rico. And um, the truth is, man, we pumped tons of money into this trip. And uh, we saw the glory of God. We saw miracles. 
and I'm tired, man. I'm 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 coming. I you know I took just a group of forty five people, um, and I'm driving back. We landed in Houston. We have a five hour drive back to Brownsville, and I get a message from Kevin Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need you to meet. I remember we got this meeting with this guy named Tommy, and I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. I was sick tired. This is on a Tuesday. You want me to have lunch on Wednesday? I'm still not even home when you send me this message. Hey, are we still meeting? So I wake up in the morning, and I'm like, hey, uh, Kevin wants me to go to this meeting, man. I'm sick, tired. That's the truth, man. I'm exhausted, bro. And um, I end up sitting with you and having lunch with this guy, and I know that the moment we started talking, I know that it was destiny, man. God used you. Wh whatever, like when we talk about putting yourself in that environment, you went to Ohio, you went purposely, you know, you got on a plane, and you went and sat down with this guy because you understood something, you felt something. It's like you, whatever he's doing needs to be happening in the valley, and God used you, and then you connect me with this guy and in an unselfish way, because you're not selfish, because that's that's what makes you unique, Kevin. Um, you just connected us, and, and Tommy says, hey, why don't you just come and check out what I'm doing? Just come and see it. And I'm like, okay. So this guy, you know, gets me on a plane, and we're we're not doing a crusade yet because this is before the revival. This is what this is what revival looks like. People think about revival and you see the glory, but what happened? What is it that it took to get there? It's not just this wind that showed up. Mm -hmm. There's work. There's vision. There's there's sacrifice that takes place, Kevin. It just doesn't happen. And this guy every two hours had a meeting, man. Every two hours he's 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 telling his story. And what revival looks like and he's bringing the body of christ together in a very unique way and he's mobilizing the church and he starts telling this story uh crazy stories man i mean talking about guys that win a million souls a week a million souls a week documented this is telling me the story about one of his friends and and all of a sudden you think you're doing something but you feel and then all of a sudden you get exposed to the next level and that's what i'm talking about moving people mobilizing the body of christ and then, and then you feel so small because you thought you were doing something, but these guys are <laughs> out of this world, man. What wow. they're doing is insane. So he is basically it comes down to one thing: uh, the body of Christ, the church has forgotten to a, the one of the most important pieces to this puzzle. The body of Christ is evangelism, man. It's it's how to share the gospel, how to share the news of Jesus. What is Jesus, and and are you saved? Most people don't even know how to bring somebody to the feet of Christ. Yeah, and it's it's mobilizing. So let me let me ten people from your church. Let me borrow twenty five people for a week. Imagine that I'm gonna equip them, and we're gonna go win souls that same day. And these guys will fill up your church completely. Your building will get filled. This guy's going and just uh, they're taking cities, they're taking states, they're taking nations, entire nations for Christ. Uh, and then I mean, in just. Winning 80,000, uh, 80, when he says decisions, 80,000 decisions were made, 100,000 deci 100, decisions were made. That's just in the United States. There's other places, like I told you, they're, win they're, they're winning a million souls a week. Wow. It's insane. And uh, you just, you feel so small because you understand, you start seeing the numbers, the statistics on how many people really know Christ in our nation. And I'm going to tell you the truth. The church ain't evangelizing. No. We're so used to coming to the spotlight. We go to church. We hear a great message, and then I, I disconnect and leave me alone because I want to watch the football game. And uh, I think that what, what I've learned the most on this journey just the next past couple of weeks is, to tell you the truth, Kevin, is to die. I'm learning to die, man. And that's the most powerful thing about this journey. People are not willing to die to themselves. And, and I'm, I'm not teaching people how to live. I'm teaching people how to die because those who lose their lives will find it. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the church needs to learn to die. And if because if you if you don't learn to die, you can't forgive. If you don't learn to die, you can't restore your life. Because I mean, how can I forgive somebody that's done me wrong if I'm not willing to die to my emotions? I'm not willing to die to, to anger. I'm not willing to die to these things. I'm not willing to die to self. And I, I'm gonna tell you something, you're not gonna go to the next level unless you're willing to die. You're not gonna love people unless you're willing to die. And you know, when Christ goes into the desert, the Bible says that in, in Luke chapter 4, he says he goes into the desert, he says he was already filled, and he was led by the Spirit of God to go in the desert. Why would somebody filled need to go to the desert to get filled again? See, whatever he needed, whatever he was filled with, wasn't enough to take him to the cross. It says that when he came out of the desert, he came out in the power of the Spirit, which was two different spiritual experiences. See, what he needed to empty himself out of what he was filled 
because when he needed was going to take him to death. Mm-hmm. He needed to fill himself because he was about to die. So you need to fill yourself to the point where you're willing to die to this. You're willing to die. You're willing to give your life up for this, for this, if I can say this, uh, the dream of God, which is to save the body. But you, you hear the story of the apostles and how they gave their life up. There's people today that are not willing to do that. They're not willing to die. And um, Jesus went into the desert, to the mountain. He fasted for 40 days because he knew he needed to be ready because he was going to go to the cross. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel that we need to empty ourselves right now of so much things that we uh, we know and, and just fill ourselves up again with the love of Christ and get to a point where we're willing to die for this. Now, now working with Tommy, uh, part of the, the plan is to go into these cities with a lot of the the young uh, men and women that you're mentoring and bringing them to go win souls. You know, when you talk about manifest, right? Um, you talk about, you know, you create an atmosphere where, where these young people can actually experience the Holy Spirit flowing through their life and they begin to reveal the things of God, right? Mm-hmm. But that's the same thing with salvation. You know, when, when they get a soul winning script and they read <laughs> to somebody, you're actually giving that person an opportunity to manifest a new life in mm. Christ Jesus Thank for you, Jesus, Jesus Christ to come alive inside of them. You know, so that's that's you know, in that in that church or that that room where you're with the the, the youth and you might call someone and say, Hey, just kinda of share what's on your heart and you give them that mic. It's the same thing as if you're telling someone, Hey, you know Jesus loves you mm. and he has a plan for your life. Yeah. You know, you could give your heart to God today and you'll be born again. Would you like to do that? Say this prayer with me. And what happens is you're manifesting the glory of God inside Amen. their life. They're getting saved. They're getting born again. The the newness of life uh, comes upon them. The Spirit of God rises up on the inside of them. And uh, and that is really manifest, manifesting God. Amen. Manifesting God. So the you guys had a great trip. You met how many pastors and ministers? It was just uh, every two hours we were meeting with uh, different groups of pastors. And like I told you, I, he, he took me just to see what the work ethic is what his work ethic what he does and it's amazing that is you're not just seeing a guy that's you know he's preaching to thousands of people it's it's really what revival he's starting from the bottom in different states cities and he makes a a 20-year commitment 30-year commitment to that city and he started some some of these cities he's starting from the bottom man he's starting to just to talk to people sharing the vision and like you told me a while back he's you know what a gatherer is you you'll, you'll go into a place that there's show up with 10 people and then all of a sudden at the end of the week you have two three thousand people you told me about that a couple of months back and i understood it in this trip you know how it's happening uh he goes in literally with nobody with nothing and all of a sudden it just people start gathering people start coming together uh, people are tired of the same thing man well it's kind of like what what did you do yesterday you know last minute meeting and you had to turn away many people because that's an anointing to gather yeah it is it is and and you know hanging out with people like you and i you're you've become you know i I know i haven't told you like this a lot but you become a mentor to me and um i just love surrounding myself with you because uh you're just speaking something sometimes you're just speaking you're just but you don't know that you're 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 literally building me up in a way and one of the ways that god has has, has used you as a vessel in my life is to elevate my faith um and i i'm I'm, thank you I, i thank you for that kevin i think that um you, you're just, I believe you connecting me with Tommy has just, God has used you, man, as a weapon. Because uh, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. There's very few people that can outwork me. And this guy, <laughs> Tommy he, <can. laughs> he outworked me, man. Bro, this guy, he just. I got a couple others that are that are even bro more, more intense. <laughs> this guy, he outworked me, man. Yeah. And I told him in his face, and I'm like, bro, you're the first person that has outworked me. And I'm like, this is an amazing thing that you're doing here. So I kind of wanted to see what it looked like. Yeah. Because you can go in there when it's already built. But going in right now, when with, you know, starting from zero and see to go to 100, I, I believe that's the most beautiful thing. And I wanted to see it with did, my own did eyes. You, did you catch the heart of oh, the man. ministry to, to see citywide revival? So a lot of people don't know, but, but uh, Evangelist Tommy, you know, has led you know millions of people to christ and he's you know he's been crusade director he's been evangelist he's 
He's traveled the world many times over, gone and seen mass revivals. Uh, even the thing, the works that he begins, even the works that he begins, when he leaves, that work continues. Yeah. There's this big movement of uh, evangelism, uh, revival movement that's happening in the UK. They're going to fill up uh, one of the largest uh, stadiums. But it was it was Evangelist Tommy that God had spoken to to bring that into in you know to provoke it, and uh, so if you caught the heart of what it takes to see a, a, a city, a nation, a region change, amen. And uh, part of the reason why I wanted to call you is because I know that what God wants to do here in the valley, it took somebody that can go and connect mm -hmm. and to strengthen and uh, strengthen the nets for the harvest that's coming and it takes more than faith pleases god church it takes many churches it takes the entire body of christ coming together yeah. when there's unity there, there's beauty you yeah. know and uh and i knew i couldn't be that person to bring all that unity amongst all the pastors the churches and the people of god i, I could work with them and I could do as much as I can, but because the Lord has us building like FPG Family and the, and the television and, and uh, a lot of other projects, you know, it's all part of a bigger picture. Amen. You know, like when Tommy goes into Ohio, you know, FPG Family is going to be broadcasting it live. That's going to be you so know? amazing. I'm going to send Chandra over here to go run the TV she's, stuff. She's, she's oh, ready, she's awesome. man. She's uh, she's our, our, our producer. I can see that she's just having she, fun right now, man. Yeah, she's from Australia, so she doesn't know where she's at. She's just <laughs> like, I got my bag, I'll show up, let's do this. <laughs> but um, everybody has to take their position, right? And so when I was looking for someone you know praying with tommy about who that would be you know you're the only one you're the Amen. only one and so uh man i'm i'm expecting uh you know as we enter into 2022 you know uh, we got to we got to mo mobilize the body of christ we got to mobilize the church you know and i know you've been talking to local pastors already but now that you got back you know Oof. i know you're gonna be running even faster I, I understand what it looks like now and what it takes so, like I told you, my goal right now is every single day to meet with somebody. Yeah, I, I, I was doing what he's doing already, but he's just he was doing it at another scale, another level. And I, I basically I said, you know what? If, if it's if I'm gonna run with this, I gotta see what it looks like. So I went to the trenches. I understood it. I captured the spirit of this thing, and I'm like, okay, this can work. This 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 is how deep it, it'll go, Kevin. God's going to use Tommy and other great men and women of God. And we're going to have the privilege of seeing the greatest harvest in souls. Amen. And I Amen. believe we're, we're, we're right in the midst of it. Yeah. We're right in the beginning of it. Yeah. And we're going to have the opportunity to see it, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to be part of this. So he said, uh, okay, so what is it going to take to travel with 50 kids all over the country in different parts of the world? And we talked about that. What does that look like? What do we need? What is it going to take financially? We, we talked about everything. Because uh, when, when you're talking about provoking the biggest revival of the century, the biggest revival of all times, it's going to take, um, not just going to take money, it's going to take God for sure. I mean, he's going to have to be the first in everything. Yeah. But you're going to have to get all these abilities and talents. Um, just like you said, you know, you know, you know, she's ready to go anywhere. Yeah. You know, you, there's talented people that God has chosen to make this thing go to the highest level. I believe there's never been such a, a time like this to do what we're about to do. And God's preparing every single uh, person that's that's going to be necessary. He's putting them at the table and we're ready to run. We're ready to go. And I told my kids, if you're ready to go on this journey with me, uh, it might just be that we're going to be traveling as a family. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally, Kevin, getting ready to put my family on a road trip with me for the next five to ten years if that's what God wants me to do. That's literally where I'm at right now. Praise God. I'm, I'm literally ready to go all over the valley. I'm ready to mobilize what God has done to, to do here in the valley, bring the body of Christ together. 25,000 souls is going to be a piece of cake, man, to yeah. what we're about to do. Uh, and God has chosen you, Kevin, to start this thing, man. You literally God went. chose you too, man. <laughs> you literally got a plane, went to Ohio, 
uh, that guy was already done for the year, man. Yeah. He was done for the year. And then you brought him here to the Valley. And um, and I'm just privileged enough to be able to see it with my own eyes. Amen. And we're going we're gonna to enjoy seeing what the Lord has done. You know, a lot of times when, when you do the things of God, you know, you don't know how it's going to happen. All you know is you got a word. You mm. got an encouragement. And it's important for us just to follow God. You know, we're really good at following God for our own personal life. Like the Lord says, you know, oh, I want you to start doing this and, and what have you. Um, you know, do this business, do this and marry, all those things. You know, the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That's mm. what really reveals a son of God. Are you being led by the Spirit of God or not? You know, but the Holy Ghost is always leading us to life, victory, to fulfill the call of God. There's a big plan that the Holy Ghost is implemented and we're just living it out. Yeah. No matter how great it is of the things of God you see. You know, I was speaking to somebody just last week. And this is a person who's been used mightily by the Lord. But now, you know, after years, you know, was wondering, was it all worth it? You know, but I, I, I told this person, I said, a lot wow. of times you're always looking forward and you're thinking, what next? But have you looked back? to see what you're really supposed to see. Come on. So, Because sometimes when you look back, you're thinking, well, I don't have this. I wasn't, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't get that. Wow. But you're looking at the wrong thing. Did you see that woman that you led to Christ? Did you see that man that you delivered from the bondages of the devil? Do you see that family that was restored because you gave a word that was in season? Mm. Do you see the countless amount of people that they influenced as well? You know, there was this one great man of God, T.L. Osborne. He was talking, I, I, I had gone through a, a very terrible thing, you know, and I had to literally escape from the country of Uganda. Uh, we were going to do a big crusade over there. There was, a, a, there was an accident. Some people died in the vehicle. Uh, I was driving in, in, a, in a van, and the passenger that I was driving, uh, there's these two guys that were in a motorcycle, a little mo moped, they were drunk, swerving, and they swerved in front of the van, and we ran over them. Mm. And we were in uh, the outskirts. Over there, there's really not, like, law enforcement. It's like the people, you wow. know. And uh, I have experienced that in Uganda before. You know, it's That's funny. That's insane, man. It's funny but uh, because I've been, I've been arrested uh, <laughs> several times in Uganda. That's the only time I've ever been arrested in my life, Whoa. you know, and... It's uh, and none of it was was for anything other than the gospel, right? Amen. Um, but you know, I'm getting ready to be dragged out of this this vehicle and killed by a mob. There's like 200 people that surrounded us, you know, and I'm I'm ready. I checked my heart, checked my spirit. This peace of God was there. Wow. You know, and uh, I sent That's the crazy, message man. out to to my family and all that. But the the Lord delivered me. the The military showed up and escorted me out. Right. Wow. And so the Lord delivered me, and I left that country at four in the morning, right? Um, I'm in a little shack uh, in Mombasa, Kenya. I have some friends in Mombasa. I went there. There was no air conditioning, and it's hotter in Mombasa than it is here in the valley. <laughs> and they have malaria. So you, 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 they normally have these mosquito nets that protect you from getting bitten uh, and catching malaria. There, th this place didn't have a mosquito net, so I couldn't even keep the window open. Oh man! And it is hot. I'm defeated. I'm busted. I'm broken. I thought I was doing what God called me to do, and yet this tragedy happened. And I'm thinking, all I need is a word. I need to hear from God, right? And this man, Teal Osborne, I put a, a radio station that he was preaching on, and he shared, he shared a message about coming back from mm. Nigeria and he had given everything him and his wife had given everything to the land they saw thousands of people saved tons of miracles the glory of God was there but when they came back to the United States they had nothing mm. they had spent all their money come on they, man. Had, they had not worked on anything they just basically had nothing and they went to God and they said God was it worth it right and I've then he talks there, about he talks about uh, he says, but then I began to think about this one pastor that rose up from the meetings, and now he has a church of 16,000 people. Wow. And, and he was so thankful. He was like, 
it was well worth it to see what God is doing through his life, Amen. right? This, he shared that testimony probably in the late 80s. That was a recording from the late 80s. If he had waited, if he had lived a little longer, that same minister that had 16,000, the work that God did through that ministry, now it's, in, it's like 40 million people. Wow. Like 40 million. You know, a little fire, vain. a little match can cause a great fire. Wow. And every time we look at ourselves and we think about the things that we've done, we have to remind ourselves we didn't do anything. Mm. All we did was say, Lord, here's my body, use it. Here's my life, use wow. it. And He's the one that did it all through us, you know? Um, but the problem that we have is the devil starts saying, hey, what's in it for you? Mm -hmm. And then that's when the pride starts, that's where that's battle, that battle. And this is in everyone. It's in everyone uh, because in the moment of sacrifice, we've already made the decision, we're sacrificing. But then at the end of it, you start looking back. And so I was talking to my friend, I said, you know, it doesn't matter, you, you could become the greatest, largest ministry ever in the history of the world. And you will still look back thinking, did I really do what God called me to do? Did I feel that, fulfill that? And that is a lie of the enemy. Mm. Because the sacrifices that you made, the sacrifices I made, no money and no man can call for those things. Wow. They, had to, they were something that the God had to do something on the inside of us to say, will you lay down your life so that I could use it? Wow. You know? And uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, let me share one last thing with you. Um, I heard this earlier today. I heard a minister preaching, and I thought it was so awesome. How here Jesus, Jesus, God, became man mm. so that man can now be part of the Godhead. Wow. Because we are one with him. You know, you have the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And it, when we are with him, we're part of the kingship. Wow, <laughs> it's that's powerful. So awesome. That's why when we look at the things of God, we're like, yes, we can enter into the throne room of grace. Yes, my Father can hear from me, hear me. Yes, I have a purpose and a destiny, and it's the the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in dwells me. Dwells inside of us. Yeah, because yeah. we are one with Christ Jesus. And now Amen. all we're doing is we're, we're saying this life that is temporary in this world, this body that's temporary in this world, I give it to you so that you can use it to bring healing to mm -hmm. others because that's all that Jesus wants to do is set people free, heal them, and Amen. restore them back to God, the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. I, I share this. If one man full of pain and hurt and anger can cause so much devastation, we hear stories all the time of people that have done wicked things and hurt many people yeah. throughout history. What can one man or woman filled with the Holy Ghost and the love of God how much healing and restoration can cause it. Wow. And I believe that the Lord is raising up an army through you, brother. Amen. So I, I salute you. If you could do one last thing, uh, uh, I know I've, I've taken a lot of no, your time. No, man, this is... But I would love for you just to kind of share and, and pray for the people that are listening or watching right now. Uh, some of them are trying to decide whether they're going to follow God. Others might just have some certain, certain needs that they just need God to really answer for them. And just share whatever is on your heart and, and let's pray. Um, I just want to share this story. The, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a man that went far away and delegated his talents over three of his servants. And it says that one he gave five, and the other one he gave two, and the other one gave one. And it says all according to their capacities. After a long time, he says he came back to the five, and he says, here's your five. I made five more. He gave to the one that he gave two. He says, here's your two, and I produced two more. But he says that the one that he gave one to, he says he was afraid and hit the talent. And he says, here's the talent that you that you gave me it says i was afraid so i just went and hit it and here's back and there was a problem with that and he says he compares it so the talents here he's not just talking about money but in reality he's referring to life they had a responsibility to produce life and everybody's different everybody has a capacity on her but it says even if the, the the smallest in the kingdom of god has the capacity to produce one so you're not here by coincidence if god gave you an opportunity to be alive then you're alive for a purpose you're alive to at least produce one and it says that he was afraid and hit it so right now there's a spirit of fear of you producing god has a problem when you don't produce it's not just a problem with sin 
when we read the scripture, he literally has a problem with you not producing. Like he loaned you life, he gave you life, and the minimum thing that you can do is 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 produce a little bit more of that. And I'm speaking to somebody right now. Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you've given everything you have, and you see like you don't. You, maybe you think, man, there's no results of this. Maybe uh, you're you're a pastor and you think that uh, sometimes we want to compare ourselves to the the mega churches. But uh, when we talk about you know just being successful in God, you just if He called you to pastor ten, then just be faithful to those ten. If if you only have fifty people in your church, then be faithful to those fifty people. Then uh, you know he, when when we hear the, the the story when you know he went for the ninety nine, he left the ninety nine, he went for one. It doesn't say there was a thousand. It says that there was ninety nine. There was there was about a hundred. So you know what you have the capacity. To pastor at least a hundred people, so don't don't compare yourself to the mega churches. If God is giving you fifty, He's giving you a hundred people. Be faithful to those hundred people. Pastor those hundred families. Pastor those fifty families. Pastor those ten families. So right now, maybe uh, you're at a point, and maybe you're a young person that's listening to me right now, and you're saying, "Can God really use me?" You know what? God can use you. Doesn't matter how old you are. If you're getting it right now, maybe you're nine, you're ten, you're twelve, you're fifteen years old right now, and you know that you're different. That's just God telling you right now. You know what? I separated you to do different things. I don't want to be normal. I want to be different, and I've always considered myself a different person. So maybe uh, you don't fit in. Congratulations. I didn't feel like I fit in. And today, God has just opened a, a very unique door to my life. I'm about to make a decision that um, God's going to take me on this journey where I'm about to reach more people than I've ever reached in my whole life. And just because I put myself in the right place, I put myself in the right atmosphere, I'm living out the purpose of God in my life. And I believe that if He did it for me, He can do it for you. And I just declare that over your life right now in the name of Jesus. I speak life to your mind. I speak life to your spirit. I speak life to your purpose and your destiny right now. That wherever you're at, in whatever situation you're at, whatever process you're going through right now, that in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, that He will lift you up right now out of any situation. Maybe your dreams have died. I speak life to your dreams maybe you feel like everything around you has fallen to sleep i declare that it wakes up maybe your marriage is falling apart i declare right now restoration over your marriage maybe your kids have gone prodigal i declare that they come back home right now in the name of jesus maybe you're, you're expecting a financial miracle and i declare that that, that financial mir miracle it's already met in the name of jesus i declare that there's talents that there's abilities that all these things that have fallen asleep in your life right now that they will wake up in the name of jesus i declare that everything that seems dead around your life that it starts resurrecting that there's life in your dreams that there's life in your vision that there's life in your destiny right now father i just call upon from the north south east and west that you start bringing the right people lord the right people start coming into their lives anybody that's listening to me right now from the north south east and west that you bring the right people into our lives so that we start mentoring we start equipping the right people that you're bringing into our lives father i declare that you bless kevin faith pleases god and everybody that you put around him right now that you will complete and fulfill every dream and destiny that you have deposited in his life in Jesus name father I call upon everything that's been trapped inside of us that needs to manifest in this season that it will manifest like never before father we're willing to die to ourselves so that we can see your dream come to pass in Jesus name I just declare it and I call upon it that the valley is about to go through the biggest transformation the biggest soul winning the biggest harvest that has ever been seen in the history. And I just thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be part of it. And I just call it to pass in Jesus' name right now. Amen. 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 Praise God. Brother, if people want to reach out to you and get to know <laughs> oh, you. Or, the presence of yeah, God. powerful prayer, powerful time with God. But if people want to get to know you, how can they reach you? How can they get? Um, you, can, you can look us on Facebook. It's called Manifest Tour. Uh, you can look at uh, my Facebook as well as Rolando Garcia, uh, Somebody Ministries. So um, just check us out on, on our social media platforms. Um, if you see me kind of funny there on some pictures, I used to have long hair. I don't have long hair anymore. He used to look like Jesus. <laughs> now, he, now he looks like Jesus in the glory. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just uh, follow us on our social media platforms, uh, Manifest Tour. My name is Rolando Garcia. And I'm, I'm uh, just going to be putting some content. I'm actually doing something called... Uh, front row conference in the month of february of 2022 um we're doing it exclusive for just 200 leaders i just want to focus myself on on a just a smaller group of people and just really pour into them but uh just follow us we're ready to go we're ready to run we're ready to manifest somebody praise the lord amen amen hey bro it's great talking to you thank you for coming on amen thank you jesus well god bless you and god bless everybody watching
Amen. We'll talk to you later. Bye.